very good evening and welcome to Prime Time News here on TV1. You're joining me, David Caldano. Now, before we head into your stories in more detail, let's first take a look at the headlines this evening. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Another gas shortage in the market. Litro gas cites insufficient gas supplies. GLP raised to fill Basil Rajapaksa's vacant post. Budgets stir tensions at Pradesh Sabhas. Attorney General requests court to reject petitions against Yugadanavi deal without a hearing. Dr. Shafi reinstated with salary arrears after suspension due to sterilization claims. Three more Omicron cases detected in Sri Lanka. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Now taking a look at one of your headline making stories. Litro Gas Lanka says it has not released new cylinders to the market for three days. The gas company said it doesn't have gas to fill its cylinders. The Consumer Affairs Authority had rejected 3,200 metric tons of LP gas that reached Colombo on the Epic Balta tanker on Saturday. The consignment had been rejected as gas leak detecting odorant, McCaptain, was not up to standard. The LP gas tanker had reached Colombo from the Mongla port in Bangladesh. The Pericles oil tanker carrying 2,000 metric tons of LP gas reached the country yesterday. The oil tanker had reached the country from the Maldives. The Consumer Affairs Authority Chairman, Major General Shanta Disanayaka, said samples have been obtained from the oil tanker. He added that the samples would be sent to two labs for tests. Approval would be granted for the gas consignment after the lab reports are studied by an expert panel. A gas shortage has arisen in the market at present. Litro Gas Lanka Limited says they don't have LP gas stocks and that it has not released cylinders to the market for three days. Laugh's Gas Company says its supply of gas cylinders has dropped to about 25%. The company noted that it would be difficult to even supply 25% from January if there is no foreign currency to settle the payments for which letters of credit are issued. The United National Self-Employed Businessmen's Association staged a protest opposite the State Ministry of Consumer Protection today. They demanded the resignation of State Minister Lasantali Gewanna and the chairman of the gas company for exposing the lives of people to risk. What is this crime that they are committing? Just like they paid money for the fertilizer ship, they will pay for gas cylinder stocks as well. A religious ritual was held at the Sinigama Devalaya, seeking to punish the gas companies that expose the people's lives to risk. We are hearing reports of gas or gas cookers exploding. The chairman of one gas company has not come to the forefront. He hasn't even answered the telephone calls. President Gautabe Rajpaksa has appointed them to these positions to face their responsibilities and not to evade them and be in hiding when issues arise. We wish to remind them about that. While the gas crisis continues to worsen, Concerns are also mounting on a deal to sell 40% of shares of the Yugadanavi power plant to US-based New Fortress Energy Company. Five fundamental rights petitions filed against this deal was taken up by a five-member Supreme Court judge bench headed by Chief Justice Jayanta Jayasuriya today. The petitions have been filed by the Archbishop of Kalambu, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, Venerable Ali Gunwan Sotero and the Samigijana Balawegia, Janathavi Mukti Perumuna, and the Ceylon Electricity Board Engineers Union. Ministers Udaya Gamban Pillar, Vimal Virawansa and Vasudeva Nana Kara have filed intervening applications favoring the petitioners at the Supreme Court. Attorney General Sanjay Rajaratnam filed the preliminary objections in court today, requesting court to dismiss the petitions without any examination. 
He submitted four documents pointing out that the basic requirement of finding fundamental rights petitions in a month had not been fulfilled. The Attorney General told court that according to the government's energy policy, the minister in charge of that subject holds the power to handle matters relating to energy. He argued that the approval of the cabinet was not required and that a tender process was not required to be followed. Appearing for the Archbishop of Colombo and Venerable Ella Gunwan Sotero, President's Counsel Sarya Puris told court there was no need to submit a petition in a month. He told the judge bench that the petitions were filed upon learning about the new agreement. The President's Counsel also pointed out that three ministers have already filed objections against this agreement. He argued that the ministers have been allowed to hold their positions in the cabinet as there is a truth behind their stance, although they must have been removed from the cabinet based on the principle of collective responsibility. The President's Council also observed that the Prime Minister, Finance Minister or any other minister have not filed objections against the petition, although they have the opportunity to do so. President's Council Salia Piris argued that the contradicting remarks of the Cabinet Secretary and the three ministers opposing the agreement regarding the Cabinet paper indicate that one side is making false claims. President's Council Manohara de Silva, representing the Ceylon Electricity Board Engineers Union, told court that a time frame is not required to move court when issues of national importance arise. The President's Council argued that the agreement goes against the national energy policy and that vesting the entire electricity industry with one entity is a threat to national security. The petition is to be taken up again at 10 a.m. tomorrow. It is said that our country has a history of about 2,500 years. They call themselves owners of the country. But when they start working, we can see for ourselves what happens. First, we must understand who we are in this country. The people don't know how they are selling national assets. We must protect our country for the future generations. On one hand, they are selling off the energy sector and placing national security at risk. On the other hand, they are selling lands, the port city and oil tankers. Is this why they wanted a two-thirds majority? The 13th clause says that both parties should remain committed to not disclosing the agreement for two years. This goes against the concept of sovereignty that has been established in the constitution. The parliament, cabinet, prime minister and the president can't make such decisions. Minister Vimal Veeravansa expressed his views on the case regarding the LNG deal with a U.S. company. This was during an event held in Horana. According to the original cabinet paper, it must be approved by the cabinet even after signing it. The cabinet hasn't given approval to that yet. When the Supreme Court examines the petition, it has the right to issue an order against it if it affects the country as a whole. कर्नाटक <laughs> Minister Mahinda Maravir responded to a challenge made by JVP member Sunil Handunetti regarding the LNG deal. Cabinet mandate, uh, Basil Rajapaksa Rajapaksa has submitted a memorandum to the cabinet. What does he say in that? It says that the new fortress agreement was approved when Minister Amaravira was energy minister in 2020. This is the paper that is said to be presented to Minister Amaravira. Minister Mahinda Amaravira should tell the country whether he had agreed that the deal with new fortress energy was the most efficient one in 2020. When I was the minister, the U.S. ambassador came and presented the proposal and asked the CEB officials to study it. We prepared a cabinet paper. In that cabinet paper, we did not mention about the Yugadanavi power plant. We mentioned the supply of LNG. We said very clearly that a company named New Fortress has come forward. In the cabinet paper, we proposed that a committee be appointed to inquire into the companies with a mechanism to allow other companies to come forward. But that cabinet paper was not taken to the cabinet because an election was coming up at that time. Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Zeng Hong, visited several areas in Jaffna and Manar today. 
Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Zheng Hong, visited a sea cucumber farm in Ariale, Jaffna, today. Yeah. Hey, Minister? Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here. Yeah. It's a China venture. <laughs> uh, this yes. is a fruit. Ah, yes, in China fruit, yes. Yeah. This is a project. We have, we have no two. Two projects. This is the one. To, to see and to help. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the manager here is a member of my party. He is a member of the Nalur Pradesh Sabha. The Guilan Sea Cucumber Farm helps in uplifting people's lives. It will help the country earn foreign revenue. Therefore, we must support this. <laughs> அனுமதிக்கும் Although the Chinese owners have said that they are facing losses, 236.8 metric tons of sea cucumber had been exported from the country. The National Aquaculture Development Authority said that the exports had generated nearly 1.4 billion rupees in revenue. The Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Zheng Hong, distributed fishing gear to fishermen in Jaffna and also food packs among 2,500 families. The Chinese ambassador also engaged in religious observances at the Nallur Kandasami Kovil. Foreign Minister Professor G.L. Peris was appointed as the acting finance minister during the absence of Minister Basil Rajapaksa. This was confirmed to News First by President Spokesperson Kingsley Ratnayaka. Why was Parliament prorogued? Stay tuned as we bring you the very latest with this story and many more after this short commercial break. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Bellboys got you covered. Download Bellboy today to get all your household appliance fixing and repairs done. Now available on Android and iOS. Welcome back to the news. Was the COPE committee a reason to prorogue parliament? Let's take a look at what opposition leader Sajid Premadasa had to say. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa raised questions on the decision to prorogue parliament and the future of the COP meeting. This was during an event to declare open a new Dhamma school building at the Sri Vapikarama temple in Surya Vava. कोप कमी तो है मैं खाल देवी में तूला विशुरुआ हरी ने तो हेतु मुका विशेषितम वो कारण वास पार्लियामेंट प्रोग्ड टू सस्पेंड कोप सिटिंग्स द मेन रीजन इज़ बिकॉज़ इट स्टार्टेड टू क्वेश्चन द कंडक्ट ऑफ़ द बोर्ड ऑफ़ इन्वेस्टमेंट वे आर हीरिंग दैट सेवेन न्यू ऑफिशियल्स हैव बीन रिक्रूटेड टू द बोर्ड ऑफ़ � they threatened the government that they will resign from their positions. Apart from that, the chairman and the board of directors had called for an apology from the members of the COPE who have been elected by the people. The parliament was then prorogued. The COPE that investigated these matters is not there anymore. There is one way to prove me wrong. That is by appointing the same chairman and the members of the COPE when parliamentary sittings resume. Then we can accept that they had not prorogued parliament with a wrong motive. <laughs> Now taking a look at another one of your headline making stories. Tensions flared at Pradesh Sabhas today due to issues arising from their budgets for next year. This was the situation that arose at the Horopatana Pradesh Sabha when the budget was tabled today. <laughs> Tensions flared at the Horopatana Pradesh Sabha that is controlled by the United National Party amidst allegations that the chairman had attempted to pass the budget based on his wishes. 
Sabha wala kadu tawasan karna wat ekama. As we were wrapping up sittings of the Pradesh Sabha, members of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Parliament attacked me and caused damages to the property. I ran away to protect myself. They tried to attack me. I ran away in fear. I filed a complaint to protect myself. A tense situation arose when the 2022 budget was tabled at the Hangurankhetta Pradesh Sabha today. This was amidst claims that the budget had been tabled without being taken up for discussion. We won't have anything to debate here if this continues. You left the chamber last time as well after declaring that the budget has been passed. You are doing the same thing today as well. Opposition members had repeatedly requested the chairman for a vote on the 2022 budget. The budget received only two votes in favor, including that of the chairman. A tense situation arose when the 2022 budget for the Mavanella Pradesh Sabha was tabled today. Tensions flared as a Tamil copy of the budget had not been tabled at that time. The opposition had then requested a vote on the budget. Chairman of the Pradesh Sabha and the United National Party members who hold a majority in the local authority then left the premises. The fertilizer crisis has continued to plague farmers of Sri Lanka. The moves to pay a 6.7 million US dollar compensation for Chinese fertilizer and the importation of nano nitrogen fertilizer are worsening the woes of farmers. Will this lead to a shortage of food in the country next year? A meeting between farmers of Gal Oye was held today. Officials from state institutions relating to agriculture, irrigation and agrarian officers were present. However, officials from the National Fertilizer Secretariat or the Agricultural or Agrarian Insurance Board were not present. The fertilizer given to us is useless. The harvest in Senagama has declined. As far as we know, insects haven't damaged crops previously. Our cultivations have lost their value. 80% of our cultivations have failed. In Parliament, they give the impression that we are reaping a bountiful harvest. Government must be unseated. Give us pesticides, weedicides and urea. Nano means that chemicals have been broken down into small particles. It has to be applied using containers. Officials from the Agriculture Ministry have said that we have to wear gloves as our hands can be injured as a result of coming into contact with it. It also says that this has to be applied while wearing protective gear. This has to be applied using personal protective equipment, just like nurses treating coronavirus patients. Farmers will be affected by applying this. They have given us chemicals by saying they are moving to organic farming. As farmers' associations, we must stand as one. Instead of looking at this through various angles, the country will face a massive food shortage in a few months. Former parliamentarian Samantha Vidyaratna raised concerns about the compensation to be paid for the ship carrying Chinese fertilizer. They made a cabinet decision and must now pay a compensation of $6.5 million. Do they have money for this? The treasury is bankrupt. We will show Gotabe and Mahinda where the dollars are. They can use that to pay the compensation. Sell the land in Madamulana. Sell the coconut estates and paddy fields and pay the compensation. There is no need to pay this compensation with the people's money. If that is not enough, retrieve the millions held by Nirupa Maharaj, Paksa and Thirukumar Nadesan who were exposed through the Pandora Papers. They can also obtain the money from Senadipati. There are enough people who have looted the public's money. Use their money to pay the compensation. They have destroyed our country by looting the money of the people. <laughs> Avasana Mantatra Ratapatra Tinakota and Apala Panina Mulahata Penna 
මුලහතා ගියා යන්න දරුව දාලා රටක් දාලා යන දෙමව උපයෝ ඉන්නවද දෙමව උපයෝ ඉන්නවද දරුව දාලා යන කට්ටිය ගෙදරින් එළියට කන්න නැති වෙච්ච වෙලාවේ මුන් යනවා සුදී යනවා මහජන මුදලෙන් එකට සුදි කරන්න යනවා එකට නිවාඩුගත කරන්න යනවා දැන් හත් පොලේ ගාගෙන තියෙන්නේ රට පුරා ගෑවිලා තියෙන්නේ ගන්දස් තාරේ බෑ ගොයි බිමේ ගැහුවොත් බල්ලොත් කනවා when the country is facing a crisis the president went overseas using the people's money the fertilizer is not of a proper standard gas explosions are being reported from many parts of the country this is over it's a failure e kene den iwarai den meka pay hondata ma karanna ba the daily mirror reported that at least 60 government and opposition mps are to spend their year end holiday season abroad the newspaper report said they will travel to the us uk and australia to visit their children it added that the general's house in norelia has bookings until the 31st of december the general's house is a country house designated for parliamentarians As parliamentarians afford foreign trips, people are complaining that they have been affected by issues arising from the dollar shortage in the country. Sri Lanka's official foreign reserves dropped to 1.58 billion US dollars by the end of November this year. The country's foreign currency reserves only stands at about 1 billion US dollars. දැන් අපිට ඇත්තටම ෂෝ මනි පෙන්වන්න කිව්වේ ශ්‍රී ලංකන් රුපියස් වලින් දවසෙන් දවස ඒක රේට් එක ගොඩක් උඩ යනවා. ඉතින් ඒක නිසා අපිට එක්සැක්ට් ගාණක් අපිට හරියටම තියන්න බැහැ. මේ රටේ එහෙම තත්ත්වයක් හැදිලා තියෙනවා අපේ ළමයින් ජීවත්වෙන අපි ළමයින් රටේ යවන්න අවශ්‍යතාවයක් නැහැ අපිට ඇත්තටම. අපිට රටක ඉන්න කෙනෙක්ට ඩොලර් ටික වියදම් කරන්නත් බැරි වෙලා තියෙන්නේ. අපිට මෙහෙන් දැන් ඩොලර් අපිට ඕන ගාන ප්‍රමාණය ගන්න බැහැ. ඒවත් ලිමිට් කරලා නැති තියෙන්නේ. ෆේ සල්ලි අපිට ගන්න බැරි වෙලා තියෙනවා. ඩොලර් ප්‍රශ්න ඇති කරෙත් රජයෙන් අපි දැන් ගෙවන්න වෙලා තියෙන කුණු නැව් වලට ගෙවන්න වෙලා තියෙන්නේත් අපි අපි තමයි වන්දි මං හිතන්නේ මේ රටේ ජනතාව දැන්නත් වැදි බාන්ඩාගාරින් නිලධාරින් කොච්චර රටක යනවද කියලා. ඒ කියන්නේ අවුරුදු දෙකට. ඒ වගේ මහ බැංකු නිලධාරින් කෝටි ගණන් විලක් කරලා රට යනවා. ඒක මේ රටේ ජනතාව දැන්නේ ඇත්තටම දැන්නේ නම් ඔය ආයතන දෙකට මිනිස්සු පැනලා ගහනවා ඇත්තටම. Former Health Minister Rajita Sena Ratna had said that there is a shortage of medicines in the country. They don't have money to import essential medicines. There are about 753 medicines in the ordinance. Out of them, 160 are classified as essential medicines. There is a shortage of essential medicines. They aren't importing medicines. They don't have money to import as well. But they say there is no shortage of medicines. Out of the 52 essential medicines, 32 medicines are not there in the country. There are no essential emergency drugs like anti-venom. If a person comes to the hospital with a snake bite. that person will die if the bite was poisonous five medicines used to treat heart related ailments aren't there medicines are also not there for diabetes and three respiratory problems 32 essential medicines are also missing amidst the situation mps and ministers are going on vacation about 60 of them are going overseas for vacation where are they finding dollars from is there a separate bank that issues them dollars is there a vip bank to give them dollars if the children don't have money to study and if the people don't have money to eat or buy medicines where are they finding the money from The Jatika Janabala Vege formed by the Janata Vimukti Peramuna and groups from several sectors says it is planning to embark on a new journey. Their convention will be held in Colombo next Monday as part of these efforts. When issues arise in the country the people expect conventional solutions just as the government has created mistrust among the people to a greater extent the people are also rejecting the conventional political camps. The people are asking for a new alternative. We must bring all the citizens calling for a healthy society. society to a certain point that point is the jatika janabala vege anni madhyasthane tamai jatika janabala vege samagi janabala vege ni kata karata ek sambandha vivada metek sampradayika deshapalana sanwada tibuni the trend of traditional politics is that they join hands on stage declare each other as friends and distribute the perks among themselves therefore the jatika janabala vege won't directly or indirectly join hands with the two conventional political camps ekakatavaya jatika janabala vege tuni siduwanne ne a gazette was published recently proroguing parliament with effect from last sunday was the cop committee a reason to prorogue parliament The Committee on Public Enterprises known as COPE is responsible for ensuring the financial discipline 
of government and semi-government institutions in the country. It submits reports to parliament on the accounts, budgets and estimates, financial procedures and also the performance and management of these institutions. Professor Charita Herat, a Sri Lanka Puddhijana Peramuna MP, served as COPE chairman until parliament was prorogued recently. Mahindam Ravira, Mahindananda Aludgamage, Rohit Abhigunwardana, Sarat Vira Sekara, Susil Prema Jayanta, Jayanta Samaravira, Indikan Ruddha, Divi Chanaka, Nalaka Godeheva, Rao Fakim, Anur Kumara Desa Naika, Patali Champika Ranavaka, Jagat Pushva Kumara, Harsha De Silva, Iran Vikram Ratna, Nalim Bandara, SM Marikar, Prem Nazi Dolavatta, Shanakin Ras Manikam, and Mother Vitanage were among the members. Many revelations were made in November as senior officials from the Board of Investment were summoned for COPE sittings. The former Director General of the Board of Investment has been appointed as an advisor with the approval of the Board of Directors of the BOI. 13.37 million rupees have been spent for the official vehicle, salary and fuel allowances paid to him from May 2020 to April 2021. The company has paid two Director Generals this year. The additional Secretary at the Presidential Secretariat must submit a report on this. We need to inquire into this further. Let's suggest an internal inquiry into this. Weeks after details came to light on the payment of fuel and driving allowances to officials, the directors of the Board of Investment and the chairman Sanjay Mohtala had resigned from their positions. A dictatorship was present in the BOI. The chairman and the director general contacted his henchmen and recruited them with the aim of running the institution the way they wanted. Now we are in massive fear as to whether the chairman will have to face the consequences of revealing those details. As parliament has been prorogued, the president can appoint a new chairman when new sessions begin. Several serious transactions and dealings involving Sri Lanka cricket were recently exposed before the COP committee. On previous occasions as well, parliament had been prorogued when committees such as COPE were on the verge of publishing reports on these serious deals. When the bond scam occurred, the parliament had conducted a parliamentary inquiry for the first time in history. So we prepared the report and asked parliament for an interim report. After preparing the interim report, I placed it on the order book the next morning to present it to the speaker. While preparing the report at around 7 p.m. and getting the signatures of the MPs, I heard that Parliament had been prorogued. The Speaker did not even know that it was being prorogued. When the Central Bank bond scam was being investigated during my term as COP chairman, and when the investigations became complex, the Parliament was prorogued. They wanted to remove me from the post of COP chairman and to disband the committee. The government could not appoint one of their allies as COP chairman, although they tried doing that because there was mounting opposition from the people. The government then reappointed me as the chairman of the COP. The decision to prorogue parliament is a problem to the people. Is the COP committee a reason behind the decision to prorogue parliament? Now on to another one of your headline-making stories. Secretary to the Health Ministry has instructed to reinstate Dr. Shafi Shihabdin, who was previously sent on permanent leave on allegations of performing illegal sterilization operations. The Minister Secretary has issued a letter to the Director of the Kurnagali Teaching Hospital in this regard. He has also instructed to pay the salary arrears to Dr. Shafi Shihabdin as well. Dr. Shafi Shihabdin, who was employed at the Kurnagali Teaching Hospital, was arrested on the 25th of May 2019 over three allegations. In June 2019, the Criminal Investigations Department informed the court that there was no evidence to back the allegations. Now on to a COVID-19 update. Deputy Director General of Health Services Dr. Hemant Herat says that three more people infected with the Omicron variant of COVID-19 have been identified in the country. Accordingly, the total number of Omicron infections reported in the country is four. From the two of the three samples we identified with COVID-19's Omicron variant, one was an outbound traveler while the other was an inbound traveller. We identified a close contact of the inbound traveller who had contracted this variant as well.
And with that, we wrap up prime time news here on TV One. For more news, log on to our award evening website. So it's www.newsfirst.lk. For the News First team, I'm David Paldano, along with our signing interpreter for tonight, Brian DeCleese. Take care and good night.